<laughs> I'm Bruce Willis. It's someone's gotta die hard. To be expected. Gator 19 to love it, motherfucker. Twitch Prime. So when it comes down to like strafing and shooting, I think most people make the mistake of like, let's say, okay, let's say this is dorms for instance, okay? I'm second hall L. Guys down hall, past the beds, two jackets right here, right? Most people make the mistake of walking out, just perpendicular and doing that, right? And thinking that's gonna work. See, in that scenario for me, when I do the step out, do I go with a single tap or just a just a single burst? You know, a lot of people will just kind of go. They'll step out. So this is like the corner of the wall. They step out and they go crazy with it, right? But the biggest thing to know when you're when you're strafe shooting is that you need to counter your your opposite direction. So if I'm moving right, I need to shoot. You know. I'll hit a lean too. The lean, I don't know. I, I lean a lot to shoot. Like that's what's natural for me, and it seems to work for me. Um, you need to counter your movement. Uh, a lot of people will just do step out and ah, it's not working. Strafe shooting is not working. Well, they're not countering it. So you see the difference. You need to counter it. So if I'm gonna go to the left, I'm gonna aim right. And then you can get your peaks and you know, your strafe, your strafe. When I'm when I walk perpendicular, I'm just tapping. I'm not gonna spray because it's not gonna be accurate. Um, and if I do do it, I will hit a crouch. So if I'm gonna step out, just parallel, just all I'll, I'll step out, crouch. To get that, you know, that recall reduction to help with the with the thing. Does that kind of make sense? So strafe shooting, aim opposite. Okay, recoil control is pretty similar in Tarkov. All right. Pretty simple. So, a lot of the times, I see players. I hit this guy twenty fucking times. But one, we just went over. They're not. They're not counter counter aiming their strafe right to hit shots, or they're dead standing up and moving. But so you're always more stable. You're gonna have less recoil when you're standing still. All right. So standing right here. I'm st full stance, and I'm gonna shoot a few shots. The gun jumps a lot more, but every little notch, see, like if you do Control C, it'll slowly get better. So at a full crouch, you're gonna have you're gonna have the halfway mark of of reduced recoil reduction that you can on a full auto compared to that. Then when you lay down, it's almost non-existent. So, a lot of the top Tarkov guys, what you'll see them do is run out of a corner, hit a crouch because they already know that's the lowest re that's that's the lowest recoil they want without going prone to fully minimize their movement, right? So crouching is your friend in Tarkov. Even the shittiest guns could be made less shitty with a crouch compared to standing up and shooting. If you watch me play, most of the time, if I'm going for a precision shot, I am hitting a crouch. I'm not going to be dead stand. I'm not going to be standing full, full, full height. One, you make yourself smaller target, harder to hit. Two, you get recoil reduction. I'm done. Thanks, Thanks for two. the 21 months. Okay, as far as playing corners, Right hand peaks, even with inertia, are your friends. Okay. Thank you, Smitty Kels. I appreciate it, man. Um, you can, you're still able to you line up with your shoulder. You can still 
tap E and get those fast in and out peaks. What I like to do though is I'll go Q and E and it's better for mentally for my timing to get those shots off. That shit still works. Now left hand peeking is way more dangerous because of how much more you have to expose yourself. So your gun's in the right hand side, so you need to bring your gun all the way over and peek your full body while you expo expose your thorax and your face. Wait. So the best way to set up is setting yourself up with a right hand peek. Left hand peeks are the 50-50 split. You're either gonna kill the motherfucker or you're gonna die. So I try to stick to right hand peaks because I almost think it's like an 80-20 and I'm the 80% when I do that, you know? I can hold a lot tighter of an angle. I can just tap, tap my E. Get shots down range. I can also just walk up and without even peeking, just get some accurate shots down range. I was using that in dorms yesterday. Point shooting? Okay, point shooting. All right, so I'm gonna do crotch for reduced recoil reduction like we already talked about. Okay, so the reason you see streamers use the D-ball, all right? and any kind of IR laser. When you see that red flashlight, everyone's like, why don't you use a red flashlight? What's the point of that? Well, it's because we're not noobs, all right? We've gotten accustomed to the center point of our screens and that we know that with the D-ball, it adds the same hip fire accuracy bonus that it would casting a laser. But what casting a laser does is people know where you're looking and where your gun's pointed. So they're most of the time not gonna peek that. And if they're, they're dumb as fuck if they do. So, anyways, a laser, Tarkov, helps you, uh, your recoil control with hip fire. So, here's point shooting with the laser on, on the IR mode. And here's point firing with the laser completely off the gun. Here's the difference. Now with the P90 this close range, you're not gonna see that crazy of a difference, but you could actually see the gun doing doing weird weird movements and dives and dips. But also, I mean, you could definitely see that there is a tighter grouping compared to that. And at range, that's gonna matter a lot more. You can see how much, I'll, I'll, I'll stand a little further back and do it again. I'll do it on that wall over there. Okay. The laser on. This is got the gun hot. Oh, no, I broke it. Okay, that's with the laser on. It's going to be all fucked up because the malfunction. And this is with the laser off. Just watch the gun dip and dive. Now, because we had the malfunction, you can see our initial spray on the first before we had the malfunction. You can see how tight that is. And then you can see without the laser how all over the fucking place it is. That's why it's beneficial to run any kind of laser. Even in IR mode, if you don't want to cast laser, this being in the, the red flashlight mode friggin' adds the bonus. We'll do it close range this time. You'll be able to see, you can still even see differences in close range, so. That's with laser on. Please show a difference being this close. Just watch the gun dive and dip and shit. Still even close range all over the place compared to how tight that is. Just went bam and brrr -ta. This one's just brrr -ta -ta -ta. Even close range. Lasers make a difference. Run lasers. It'll save your life. Here, I'll show it with an M4. You guys want to see what it's like with an M4? That's a solid ball. Okay, here's with laser on, point shooting.
been a lurker for a while and got gifted, so it's time to sub. Love from Russia less than three. Yo, love. Thank you, Claw. And here's without the laser. You guys see the difference? This gun is actually super noticeable. Do you see how big of a difference a laser makes? So IR, like I said, gives the same exact bonus to as a regular laser. We we'll do a laser off for next, or we'll do a suppressor off next. Here's with suppressor or laser off. Even close range, that difference is freaking crazy. That's with laser on. That's like all over the place. Even that close range. Here's laser off, no suppressor. Alright, here's gonna be laser on. Suppressor. If you're comfortable with the center point of your screen, you don't need to run a la you don't need to cast the laser. Just run the IR mode to get the same benefit. Look at that difference. <laughs> That's without laser. That's with laser. We don't run lasers in the red flashlight mode for for just for fun. Like we run them for a reason. This is called the D-ball. And actually, you know what shocks me? The amount of people that don't know that in chat that are actually just learning this. Okay. I'll lay down a play. So, I'm almost certain if you've played Tarkov, you've been in this situation. You ever walk, you ever find yourself in two-story dorms, you walk up the stairs, and you know there's a guy to the right, and you know there's a guy to the left. Right? We've been in this situation. Alright. So, the, the whole point is minimalizing targets, you know? And setting yourself up for an opportunity to fight one at a time. Okay, so what I'll do in this scenario, I'm not actually going to throw a nade right now, but um, what I'll do in this scenario, if I know there's a guy, they always sit right there, and they always sit down there near the bathroom, or right there. So, what I'll do in this scenario is, I will throw a nade down this hall, making this guy cover up, if, and if I want to ego peek someone, then I only have to worry about one target and not getting shot in the back because this guy's worried about an M67 grenade, okay? M67s have five second fuse times. So as long as that nade's on the ground, I have five seconds of play without a guy pushing out that doorway. Five seconds is enough to clean up one dude. So I know, throw that nade. He's pushed in the room. I have five seconds to fight this guy, get back in cover. And then maybe I don't get this guy, but I hit him a couple times. He's going back to heal. I'll throw a nade down that hallway, keep that guy away, and then I'll have to worry, then I'll have a right-hander, I'll hit some jiggle peaks. Bam, bam, bam. Then I have one more target to worry about. Hopefully, I'll finish this guy off. I'll start shooting down at his door, keeping him back so I can regain cover, you know, find hard cover and wait for him to peek. This is some... Militant? I don't know what that means. I don't know. <laughs> is that good? <laughs> Did the nade plays or work? It worked. Fuse time on these. So this guy there, bam, he's busy. Gotta worry about this guy. Bam, 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 bam. Okay, that guy's not dead. I'm gonna throw a nade while he's healing. Keep him in there. I'm gonna worry about this guy. I kill him. Nade's still going off. I'm gonna retake cover. What if, if someone's pushing you? The biggest thing that I've learned is, and you'll see me do it in fights, is that if someone's, someone, you know, most players, what they do is a nade followed by a push. 
because they think when the nade's going to push you in the room, but they're not going to run on top of their own nade. All right. So most of the time, if you if you meet them with the same amount of aggression, it's a surprise. When you sit still, you're a dumbass, and that's how you die. So let's say a dude's throwing a nade at uh, actually a scenario just happened the other day. We got a clip of it probably. We've all been in this scenario. We're fighting dorms. Guy down the hallway throws a nade. Throws it lands right there. It blows up. You retreat back in here. You hear you hear a guy running down the hallway. Let that nade blow up. He's still running down the hallway. His gun's down. He doesn't expect someone to pop out and shoot them back. He's expecting to walk into the bathroom and gun your ass down unexpectedly. Most of the time, if you if you if you meet someone with the same aggression, you can get them. You have a lot higher chance. Then when he would around this corner and anticipate you and pre-fire you, if you meet him after his nade explodes, you just get him. You know? Alright, let's go put some light off. 